Welcome everyone. Um, really nice to have you here at today's webinar, um, which is called Creating a Business Culture of High Performance, Setting Goals and Driving Performance. And this is the second of three that we're running with our member P3OD, uh, following uh, Culture and Business Growth in January. And it will be followed by dealing with underperformance on Monday, the 6th of March. Uh, I'm Phil McCabe. Uh, I'm the development manager for Merseyside and Cheshire. And once more, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'll shortly be hang handing over to P3OD's Mark O'Hagan, who will deliver the presentation before we open to questions. Please do use the Q&A uh, button to ask questions uh, of Mark and we'll try to get through as many of the answers as we can. Please do feel free to use that throughout the session as Mark's speaking. Uh, so Mark O'Hagan is a director of P3OD. He's an experienced le at leading business improvements across the private sector, across local governments and NHS health trusts. Uh, his expertise includes leading business process improvements, developing staff performance, and designing workplace training. Uh, he's currently working on developing local government strategy, strategy and delivering a management qualification to the NHS and providing coaching and mentoring to small business. Mark, very warm welcome over to you. <clears throat> yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Phil. I'm gonna put some slides up. Um, I'm having to, normally I'd have my business partner, Pamela, with me who um, helps me with some of the, the technical uh, stuff, but I will try my very best uh, to uh, listen to the questions that you've got uh, and also speak at the same time and um, all of the things in between. So um, I do hope that you can see um, a set of slides on the screen now. I'm just gonna put it in present mode. And I'm sure someone will, I'm sure Phil will let me know if something's not working. Uh, yeah, so as, as um, Phil said, I'm, I'm Mark O'Hagan. The reason um, we're speaking today is, is a couple of reasons, really. Uh, one is we are a member of the FSB. Um, we have been for the last, last few years. And we're really passionate about small business. And like I'm sure many of you, we're constantly thinking about kind of how do we how do we grow? How do we respond to change in the marketplace? You know, how do we get through the next next few months? And I thought it would be good today to share some of the stuff that we we sort of advise companies on, but also kind of reflect on us as a business. Um, you know, we've um, we, we sort of started three years ago and, and last year we won Startup Business of the Year for the, um, the sort of Cheshire North Northwest area. Um, and, you know, we're now at that point where we're trying to figure out where, where do we go next? How do we grow? What are the things that we need to be really sort of mindful of? So I'll bring a little bit of our story to the to, to, to kind of the, the presentation. Um, but again, I'll be I'll be looking out for questions and suggestions. And look, I, you know, while I, will, I, I hope I've got stuff that is useful and interesting and relevant, I'm sure you'll have ideas as well. So I'm always open to hearing what other other businesses have. We, we learn through through others quite often. So um, yeah, so this is all about business performance. It, it really is about setting goals and driving performance and so really thinking about how to do that really well. But before um, we do that, just why why us? Um, you know, firstly, we put our hand up and said, we're happy to talk about something. Uh, and we did some pilot sessions um, in sort of the Liverpool area, which went really well. But the other thing is we do three things. So P3 is because we do three things. We do HR. So we do HR policy, HR strategy, planning. Um, we also help with recruitment and mediation and performance issues. So we really understand the people side of things. We are effectively a management consultancy, uh, a small one. You know, there are three members of staff at the moment uh, hoping to grow that. But we do a lot of stuff around business improvement. So we go into private companies or public sector companies and we help them with strategic planning, uh, thinking about their culture, um, dealing with kind of organisational change or process improvement. So all of those different bits, the mechanics that kind of keep businesses going. And, and we're really proud to be also a training provider so we can deliver qualifications through City and Guilds and the Institute for Leadership and Management. And we hope to grow that part of the business over the next three years. Uh, but that's kind of us. And that's why we're here today. We've got a lot of experience of working with businesses, working with people and helping them to, to grow, in essence. Um, we've got a quick poll first. Um, we, it, it may work. It may not work. I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll have a go. But there are two questions I'd like to, to ask you. 
So um, the first question is around having a business plan. So you know, we we currently have one. It's it's on a, a, a computer thing somewhere. We we do we do sometimes use it. And um, I also want to know how how important is your sort of business plan to to your business. So these these two things would be a really good um, really good place to start. I'm hoping that the poll will pop up. But I know that we we were just trying to work that out this morning. Thank you so much. I know that was uh, really sort of hard work to get that going. So I really appreciate it. We've now got the poll on screen. So you've got two questions that really good if you could click on an answer. So do you have a business plan? Yes, no, don't know. Um, how important is your business plan to your business? Very important, slightly important, not really, and not at all important. And um, we will um, give that a couple of minutes to, to come through. Um, I think it's it's a good it's a good place to start. It'd be really good to understand where where you are with with all of this, and then it makes sense as we go through to the next session section why I'm sort of asking asking these questions. So, how close are we to getting results through? I wonder. Could do with some music at this point, isn't it? Some sort of interlude music, um, and it's very strange when you do these webinars because you can't see or hear people. I can't even see, you know, so I can't see if you're smiling, or if you're grimacing, or whatever it is. So, if you've got a business plan, so uh, oh, 63% have. Interesting. Okay, great. 30% um, don't um, don't currently have one, and 8% of you um, don't know. Okay. Uh, so, how important is your business plan to your business? So, you've got uh, 35 of you, 35% of you are saying it's really important, very important. 40% so of you are saying it's slightly, 20% uh, uh, we're saying not really, and 5% are not, not at all. And I know you can probably see those on the screen, but for those watching this back, um, we need to read through them because they don't um, always um, sort of show. But we'll, we'll keep this information and we'll share it with you when we send the slides back. So it's interesting, isn't it? We're not all on the same page. You know, some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us think it's really important. Others don't think it's that important. And hopefully that that's sort of the, the start, a really good starting point for the rest of this um, uh, sort of uh, webinar. So I've done a bit of research. I thought it'd be useful to share some data with you. Uh, all of the links for where I found data from are on the um, back of this um, sort of slide deck. So you'll you'll be able to find this information. A lot of it's come either from the ONS. Um, or it's come from some research by our big service companies like McKinsey and Accenture and people like that. Um, so it's not my data. This is data that is, I'd say, relatively decent stuff, you know, statistically relevant just about. So the first question is, when employee goals are linked to business priorities, managers, managers report a something increase in performance. And normally if I had my business partner who would do kind of like a sort of a, a, a two person act. Uh, but she she can't be here. So I'll sort of work it work it through with you. So hopefully, it probably won't be as fun. But normally, we're a bit a bit of a laugh with this. So you know, we 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 would expect that to be quite quite a high quite a high number. So we got forty six percent. So when employee goals are linked to business priorities, managers report sort of a forty six percent increase in performance. You'd think it probably more, wouldn't you? Um, but actually, the you know that that relationship between uh, I guess clear business goals and um, you know performance management. You know, is it's a bit it's a bit choppy at times, and it may it may be to do with the process. It may be to do to how people enact it, and I'll explain that a little bit um, later. So, of companies who have effective performance management systems, X percent of employees employee goals are linked to business priorities. So, similarly with this, you you would think that you know most staff would have have this link, and I suspect Pam will be thinking. My business partner will be thinking, oh, it's about ninety nine percent, which is not far off actually. I've got ninety one percent. Um, who, where we've got really good business um, performance management. So uh, you've got clear corporate goals, a clear a clear plan. You know, so for us, you know, sole traders, or maybe for those of us who've got a couple of employees, got a really clear set of goals, and our staff priorities um, are, you know, our team members have got really clear um, objectives linked to linked to that um, linked to that plan. So, you know, obviously this next question is largely one that's asked of, you know, and they tend to do these surveys. Let's ask the FTSE 100 or let's ask our friends who we can we know we can get to. But these are big companies. So, well, you know, there's a question about relevance to, to our space, but hopefully we become as big as those in the future. So I thought it'd be a useful thing um, to, to look at. But 45 percent of businesses are satisfied with their planning process. So, you know, imagine you've got these directors, boards of directors, managers all getting all getting together, maybe for a week away, somewhere really exciting that we can only ever dream of to really plan through what is it the company's going to do over the next sort of three to five years. Loads of money, these expensive people to bring together, probably bring in facilitators to do it. 
you know, there'll be some gains as well along the way. And they, they spend all this time coming together with these strategic plans. And yet only 45 percent are saying they're actually satisfied with it. And bearing in mind, you know, that this kind of approach to strategic planning came out, I guess, in this in this well, sort of 40s, 50s, really, with classical management theory. But, you know, more recently, I guess, in the 90s, that's when we started to bring some of this stuff into kind of the standard practice of business. Um, and then X percent of, uh, of decisions are linked to company um, business plans. So this is really interesting, probably why people are dissatisfied with the planning process, which is we've written this brilliant plan. And yet only 23 percent of our strategic decisions are linked to our company um, plan. So that means that, you know, it's kind of that old adage, isn't it, which is once you've written the plan, it's kind of out of date. And I think there's part of that. Maybe it's also the fact that when we're in a business, it's difficult sometimes to see that wider picture. You know, maybe we're not asking as broad a, a set of questions. It's probably because economic landscapes change so quickly and we can't really foresee them. Um, you know, certainly the last um, you know two years in the UK, I'm not sure we could have thought, you know, certainly when you're planning or we were planning our business, I don't think we could have really planned for COVID followed by some sort of economic shock. Uh, followed by, you know, uh, kind of issues around, um, I guess, sort of stagflation and, um, you know, problems with recruitment and all these different things. It would have been difficult to foresee all of those. So I think a lot of our decisions are made outside of our planning. But I think it's a really interesting point to bear in mind about, you know, if you create a plan, how live does it have to be to help you drive your business forward? And the last question, which is the question I wanted to um, surprise Pamela with, um, but I wanted to ask her this question, but she's not here. So I'll ask it to myself. So a business plan will improve your com company performance by what? So I spent probably a few hours sort of going through academic papers and uh, sort of, you know, I guess, thought pieces by, you know, the likes of sort of Simon Sinek and, and all that sort of stuff. And it was really inconclusive. And I just made an assumption that having a really good plan equals a really successful business. So the reason Uber have done so well is because they had a really, really good business plan. Yeah, absolute ninja. Everyone was owning it. But actually, as it happens, there possibly isn't a correlation between having a business plan and the perform performance of your company. Now, I say that, I say that sort of in tongue in cheek. I think it's important to undertake the planning process. And this is what this research didn't test. Um, and by the way, the research that um, said it, there wasn't a correlation was based on British companies. Um, I think there was one that was done in the 80s and there's one that was done sort of in the noughties. I, I hadn't had time to do a proper uh, analysis of all of that research. Maybe there are some that show correlations, but the, the ones that were sort of hitting with the most sort of citations were those that suggest that there wasn't a correlation between um, or causation between a business plan and company per company performance. But I think the process is still important. I think it's, you know, do you have one? I think is very different to, um, you know, we've undertaken a process and we've we've translated those um, company, uh, I guess, priorities, company objectives, smart targets into the work I do as a director of my company and into the work of, of the staff who work um, work for me. So I think just an interesting, interesting set of context. I'm just going to have a quick look at the Q&A because something's popped up. Uh, it says, director has no interest in what he thinks as of as airy, fairy stuff. Hard to get him to implement core values and a business plan that we stick to. I, I think there's a. it's really interesting, isn't it, that um, we have, you know, a, as you know, people who work in companies or as directors, we can spend some time in that airy, fairy space being a little bit, um, I guess unclear and today is really about trying to set some some processes that can help you with that clarity but I agree I've worked in organizations where that that is really frustrating um, you know you really want to be, have that instruction about what is the the sound pit I can play in what can I do what can't I do so I think while what this data is sort of saying is that for, for sort of 50 percent of us that real clarity is really important OK, um, I've now got the Q&A stuck over um, my screen, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I, I was doing re some reading, and uh, as you do, and I, I, I found this quote, and I think it's just pertinent to, to me, because at the moment we are going through the, the business planning process. We're trying to figure out where we go. So, um, you know, this says you didn't come this far to only come this far. And I think, you know, for some of us actually to come to a certain point is good enough and we're going to carry on happily performing as we are. But, you know, uh, you don't want to lose what you've got. 
you know so I think there's something about really thinking maybe annually daily weekly whenever you want to do it just about making sure what you're doing what your offer is you know what your service is what your product is is still relevant to your market you know is still you know achieving what you want to achieve or if you are you know have a different view about you know success which is all kind of what it is and you want to grow even bigger or you want to acquire some people I think you know there's something about really working this through and thinking about it but for me this is something that I'm going to stick on my wall um, for the next next few weeks as we work throughout our business plan so you know you only I, I just thought it'd be good to share some um, disaster stories um, one of the things that um, I was looking at is that you know we're, we're a business of three people and um, the, the data from the ONS that came out last quarter says there are about 82,000 businesses of our size that sort of went um, in the last sort of quarter. Uh, I haven't had a chance to properly understand that data. So um, maybe you, some of you have a better understanding of that. But um, I guess what it was making me think is I don't want to be one of those three companies that kind of get it wrong. And it is scary. OK, uh, just three examples. Motorola, um, one of the mistake they made in their planning process is that they said we were in the sort of early noughties as we want to be a luxury brand now. OK, so they spent millions of pounds on uh, researching products, researching customer base. And maybe it was the wrong timing because, as we know, you know, the, the market are really hungry for sort of premium products. But they created something and it was an absolute total strategic planning disaster is how that was described online uh, and they uh, lost millions and it meant that they were acquired ultimately by another company for an absolute bargain price I think they were acquired by Lenovo um, at, at some point so you know they, they thought about an idea they had a direction absolutely great but for whatever reason they didn't think that through carefully enough and maybe they jumped before they could you know before they maybe they ran before they could walk Kodak a really famous case uh, their board <laughs> the owner of Kodak uh, thought digital was a dis was a disgrace to photography effectively and that's why they didn't make a change uh, to their strategic direction they stuck with print and unfortunately uh, they were you know outrun by digital uh, and eventually they they had a different leader and now they're quite still quite a successful company they've got like right, third is it 31 31000 um, patents in the in the photographic industry so not that they disappeared um, but they didn't pay attention to market changes. They were too tied down by their ideology of, you know, print should be an analog process. It shouldn't be digital. And, you know, there is always that argument within within all sorts of different sectors. But, you know, thinking about where things are going is important. Luckily for Kodak, big company, they could just about survive it. But I think in 2000 and was it 2012, they, they were sort of declared bankruptcy. Um, so, again, problematic. eBay. Uh, bonkers. I don't know why they did it, but they decided to buy Skype, um, a telephone, sort of online telephone company, completely unrelated to their market space. Um, I guess some companies done that really successfully. eBay did it really badly. They bought it for a load of money and they had to sell it for a massive loss. So all I'm saying here is, you know, planning is important because you've got to think about where you're going. But just bear in mind, there are some brilliant examples of where people have got it wrong and, and use that to, to shape some of your ideas. So, you know, why why does planning fail? It fails for all sorts of different reasons, but I kind of got three areas I want to talk you through. One is kind of your approach to the document. You know, how do you go about thinking about about um, the, the plan, the, the, the physical thing that you can wave around? And uh, it's a copy of private IH, uh, but it's the copy of your business plan that you can wave, wave around. The other one, which I'll share in a minute, is around kind of your sort of psychological state, the way that you think about your business, the way you think about planning. And the third is around the people around you, you know, your customers, your suppliers, your friends, your family, you know, your associates, your business partners. So that's that's the third thing. But in terms of why does the planning process fail? Why do, why do as we said earlier, a lot of businesses think that it's a bit of a an, an inaccurate science is that it is a dead document. You run it on the, you know, what's to, you know the sort of 16th of, of, of February and um, it sat there and for about you know it, maybe for the first few months you know you were really into it and then you kind of it kind of disappears into the ether of you know you trying to run your your business which is stressful it is hard it is long hours and you know reflecting on performance isn't always the most important thing on our um, calendar of to-dos um, the whole thing around measuring the right thing. And we worked with a lot of companies who really want to measure turnover and they set turnover targets. Turnovers, you know, as you all know, it, it it's 
interesting, um, but it, you know you can still make a loss with high turnover. So be careful about what you measure. And the other thing is just really think about sort of the new versus the old. So while your current operating sort of setup, the, or your business model, your approach might be absolutely bang on. Actually, where does it go next? What does automation mean? What does um, you know legal changes mean? What do political changes mean? What do customer attitudes mean? So actually, really thinking as broadly as possible about all the different things that could affect your business is really, really important. And actually a lot of plans that I've seen aren't measurable. You know, they're a, a whiffly waffly vision statement. We will be the best doodah by, you know, June next year, you know, bearing in mind you're a startup company. And actually we started with something quite similar. You know, we're gonna be absolutely disrupting the HR business chain sector. Yeah, we've done a bit of disruption, but you know, nothing to affect any national um, sort of dashboards or GDP targets or anything like that. So there's an element of realism I think there's an element of accuracy and there's an element of me keeping it live. And actually what our business plan is an Excel spreadsheet as it happens uh, with things that we can track and measure. And, you know, some months we're brilliant at it. Other months we're terrible at it. Um, so I, I'm not going to beat myself up. You know, I try try my best to, to do as I, I sort of share with others. Um, thinking about your head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, Pamela, she's here. She is. Her glass is always overflowing. Uh, you know, she said, we were talking about the plan the other day. She said, oh, you know, we're going to grow the business by 33% in the next 12 months. And I was like, well, how? She was like, well, we'll just do it. Yeah. And that's fine. Great. OK, we're going to want to do 33%. But how? You know, how are we going to do that? It's great being optimistic. It's great being ambitious. But I think you need a little bit of that, um, I guess, that reality check, that sense check to really think it through. Really don't keep an eye out on that competition. Um, we got some information, I think it was a two weeks ago, last week or something, um, a new, not even a new company on the block, but a, a company that's come and sat on our patch. Yeah, doing something very similar, a brilliant website, brilliant brand proposition, company proposition. You know, that's, uh, you know, and we could just ignore them and go, yeah, but they're not as good as us. I don't know. They probably are, actually. You know, you know, we <laughs> people are generally pretty good at what they do. So, you know, we can't ignore that. We need to pay attention to it. What do they do that we don't do? And what do we do that they don't do? And then we can start to really maybe strengthen some of our positions, you know, around things that they're doing. Or maybe have a chat with them about a merger, possibly. Who knows? We Let's not ignore our competition. Um, you know, the, the thing about risk is, you know, as a business owner, you do have to take risk. You know, we all take risk. Uh, you know, it's our money. Uh, or it's the money of, of someone who's invested in us. So we, we can't ignore this. Uh, so sitting down and thinking about the, the risky decisions that we're about to make. So with Mo Motorola, you know, they're, they're going to spend a load of money on, on R&D around a brand new product specifically targeted at luxury brands space. Lots of gold, you know, fancy equipment. You know, that's expensive stuff. You know, what's the risk to the business by doing that? You know, are we, are we at risk of putting too much into one basket? So I think thinking carefully about risk and maybe, you know, doing a bit of that market analysis, maybe using, I don't know if you're familiar with a pestle analysis, so thinking about political changes, economic changes, legal changes, social changes, technological changes. Think about those things when you're sort of considering your plan. Um, and then um, in terms of agility, uh, we have to always sort of change directions as, as business owners. And it gets tiring. You know, at the moment, I'm pretty tired, actually. I, I could do with a bit of a break. Uh, but I, I also noticed a few things in terms of the, our sector, things that are changing, and we're going to have to change. We're going to have to change how we deliver some of our courses. And so, um, you know, that agility has to be something that I can cope with in my, in my head. So getting some rest time as well and some and step away from the planning is useful. And then the last thing to say is just um, the reason plans don't fail is because it's done by sort of Gene or Jim in a dark corner somewhere. And then suddenly they go, ta-da, here's my plan. Yeah, I don't think that works very well. You know, if you're if you are a sole trader, this is a bit harder. OK, and um, I'm, I'm really lucky that I do have. Um, well, you might have a different view, actually. Sole traders probably think it's horrible having a business partner. But um, I quite enjoy having someone to not sort of hit ideas past. My 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 glass tends to be very empty and Pamela's is very full. So we work quite well on a yin and yang level. But actually, we go out and chat to some of our um, friends, some of our frenemies. We we involve our customers in our planning process. So we, we get lots of lots of feedback. And then once we've got a clear plan, we're very good at communicating that to you know, our very small team, but we're very good at setting targets for each other. 
making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and Pamela's doing what she's supposed to do and Luca, our um, business support person, is doing what he needs to do. And that ownership is, is about, you know, holding each of us to account. So if we're not doing something, we have quite a stern conversation. So I think if you think about the effectiveness of your document, how your head is at and where your head is at with the planning process, and then just be open to ideas from other people and make sure the right people know what they should be doing, then you're more likely to succeed. So here's a, a classic quote from Henry Ford. Um, some of you are going to hate these quotes, but hey, you know, we used to get these through LinkedIn and, and Instagram all the time. Um, but I quite like using them because they're kind of a nice break between, um, you know, one topic and the next topic. So coming together is a beginning. Uh, we started our company and we, Pam and I, came together and that was our beginning. Um, you know, we've kept together on, on our progress and we've tracked it. You know, the next thing is we really need to work um, you know, we need to work on our success. That's that's the next thing, because, you know, two, three years is still we're still in kind of honeymoon phase. You know, we, to get to five, 10 years is when, you know, you've been really successful running a business. So there's something about how do you you know, how do you work together with, you know, your suppliers, with your customers, all those different people. So we're at the beginning of that process. So this is going to get a bit more technical now. Um, uh, I've got just a quick one more Q&A that's popped up on my screen. I'm just going to quickly look at it now. So uh, oh, it's over here. One second. Uh, interested to learn what your business plan is for your training business. Yeah. So um, our business plan for our training business. Uh, well, that's top secret because I don't know if you're a competitor or not. But no, we're, we're thinking about the role of automation. We're thinking about the role of apprenticeships. We're looking at, you know, policy changes maybe around that. We're thinking about what the needs of our customer bases, we're chatting with our, our existing customers, we're chatting with our learners. So we're not quite sure what it is yet, but, um, you know, automation, reducing the amount of human time is, is something, but at the same time, not um, diluting the learner experience. So there's there's lots of things there. But other than that, it's top secret. Um, if you want to have a, if you want to know a bit more, uh, maybe email me and I might be, depending on what you're doing, I might be interested in sharing a bit more about that. OK, so um, just in terms of linking, you know, it, depending on how big your company is, if, you, if you're a sole trader, some of this stuff might be um, a bit unnecessary, but you'd still want to sit down and plan things. Yeah. But, um, you know, in terms of kind of that, I guess they call it the golden thread or kind of the cascade, you know, at the top of the tree, the director or the CEO or the exec, they're going to own the business plan and they're going to have written that with as many people as possible, I would hope. Um, and they're going to have some really clear goals. They're going to have quite kind of, I guess, um, you know, they won't be technically, you know, they won't be grounded necessarily in sort of qualitative or quantitative data. So they're going to think, it says, you know, we want to increase production of X. So we want to reduce, you know, wastage in our system. Then like the cascade of those objectives, those goals, which I'll share with you kind of a, a way of doing that, you know, would be going to your, to your manager to say, you know, how do we improve production and efficiency? So I'd be asking, our um, colleague Luca, you know, in terms of managing all of our learners, how can we in, in, increase their satisfaction? How can we, you know, increase, um, reduce the number of, um, you know, issues that we have with, with them, I don't know, not filling in a form for us. If the Luca then had a team, he'd be then, he'd be asking, you know, that team, uh, you know, how do we reduce downtime? You know, and he'd be distributing some clear objectives to, to those people on the shop floor. And then, you know, everyone should have a set of objectives. I, even as a director, I've got a set of objectives. Pamela sets them for me. You know, there, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but there are clear targets. I have to generate a certain amount of business. I have to deliver a certain amount of, um, I have to get a certain level of satisfaction through my customers and I have to generate new, new leads and all those sorts of things. And they are clearly written down. Uh, and then and we've got just uh, another sort of comment that says making sure the right people are in place is crucial. No point in planning if goals not aligned. Personal and business goals need to be agreed. I absolutely agree. I think, you know, I've worked with a lot of companies and they, you know, it's a bit hit and miss that thing. I'd say if every if you ask everyone, you know, do you know what you're doing right here and why? And you get a decent answer from them, then you're doing that really well. But it goes back to the earlier point, which is. Uh, you know, it's not about writing the plan. The plan itself isn't going to increase the performance of your business. It's making sure everyone involved in your business, your supply chain, your customers are really clear about their role and what to expect. That's what I'd say is the most important thing. So, you know, we all have, I'm sure, been watched videos, been to things. You know, what I'm going to share with you now is kind of how to think about a business goal. Um, which are a little bit broader, and then how to turn those into objectives. So 
um, clear targets that you could maybe share with um, you know someone in your business if they are responsible for delivering something or you can you know set them for yourself uh, and maybe get you know a, a business mentor or you know someone who you trust just to see if they're challenging and, and, and correct enough so this will give you a bit of an idea but I thought I'd just give you an idea of the, the sort of business goals you might have and then I'll sort of share what we what we tend what we tend to do so you can have business goals which are, are, are time driven so you know you might be talking about you know I want we want to achieve something by a certain date uh, so you know we want to ensure that we have you know a particular market share by by x date you know you can have a time time driven goal you can also have a performance driven goals so that might be around um, you know the, the uh, I guess work workforce satisfaction workforce downtime workforce errors uh, it could be an operational thing around production but you might have performance based measures that will probably have some data and you can have two types of data in your goals you can have qualitative quantitative so number based stuff so that might be you know number of bottles produced number of wastage uh, number of lost items in the post you know it's things that you can track as uh, as you know whole numbers or, or percentages or whatever it might be and track it over time you know sort of time time or you know sort of linear or index based numbers qualitative you might just have some text based um, goals that might be around satisfaction so you know we we you know people will describe us generally as being uh, a really nice company to do business with so you're looking for nice in all of your your feedback or you might be looking for you know it's still quantitative but star ratings or thumb ratings is a little bit more subjective so it's you know i'd call it not quite qualitative maybe somewhere in between depending on how you, you track it and then you might have a process or outcome goal. So it might be around you know, creating a new way of working. You know, the outcome is that we, we, we transform how we produce X or Y. We, uh, you know, we achieve, um, uh, you know, customer, the people that we support are have health, healthier or happier lives. So you're looking for some sort of societal outcome or, or change that you might see. But, you know, if you want to know a bit more about goals, goals, go online and do some research about how to get these right. Um, you know, you will find a way that you prefer. But assuming you sit down with your team or on your own, you say, you know, my vision for the next three to five years is to, you know, to be, you know, to increase uh, my presence in a particular you know, market space. So if you're producing gin, it might be that you want to create a number of different new products for, I don't know, the, the Turkish market or whatever it might be. It might, it might be the right market. Um, that's why I'm not in the gin business. Um, but, you know, you, you might sit down and think about your vision. Uh, your visions are a little bit, you know, they're kind of useful, but not that important. I think more important is then what do you want to achieve? You know, what change do you want to achieve? What, what, what will make you really proud? Uh, but make sure that there are a few things that you, um, a few tests that you meet. So that's where this this next sheet um, I think is quite is quite useful. Um, so we have um, you know once you've sort of thought about your goals as a as, as a business owner, which are on the left hand side, I'd really say is is worthwhile. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before, but the the smart tool to really think about making that goal on the left hand side really specific, so I can actually touch it, feel it. It's measurable. So I know six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, I know if it's gone up or if it's gone down. It's achievable. Actually, you know, you're not setting you know, like I was saying before, Pamela's like saying we're going to grow the company by 33 percent. Well, at the moment, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, you know, any growth would be great at the moment. Uh, 33 percent might be incredible, but maybe it's not achievable in the next 12 months. Maybe in the next 24 months is achievable. I don't know. We need to we need to work that one through. It needs to be relevant. So there's no point putting something in there, measuring something because you think, oh, I can measure that. It needs to be relevant to your goal. So otherwise you end up wasting time measuring things. And to be honest, you get bored of it. You won't measure it. And it needs to be time bound. So set yourself um, some some time, um, time, you know, some, some sort of context of time. And actually what we tend to do is we'll have, um, when we set our objectives, we'll have a year one, year two, year three. But I've given some example ones here. Um, and I think you know, th this process, if you spend time as a business leader working it through, and if you do have co colleagues or people who work to you or staff or whatever the setup is, that you discuss them around what, what their contribution is going to be to this. 
So, you know, we want to improve sales leads. I'd love to improve sales leads. Um, yes, we do have a website and yes, we do have a form that people complete. Um, this needs a lot more work, um, to be honest, but I was doing that with this this morning. But we really want to do, you know, increase in the UK form completion. So we want UK business by about 5% by June 2023. That's not probably a little bit too soon, to be honest. And maybe that percentage is a little bit too unambitious. But, you know, through some sort of marketing campaign, which we probably need another goal around, we'd want to increase the number of people coming to our website, completing a form to say, I'd like to, you to quote me for some work. And I'd like that to be, you know, X percent by a certain date in the future. Now, I'd say whenever you do this the first time, you know, it, it might, you know, if you've not done it before, uh, you know, you've got, you've got to have a stab in the dark, um, you know, think about it. And then once you've got year one data, you can then play around with it. And you can start to see, actually, you know, if I did a bit more of X or a little less of Y, I could probably push things forward a little bit more. And then in addition to just having form completion. So if you see with that goal, there's probably quite a few objectives. Um, you know, implement, implement some sort of validation tool, because at the moment we get a lot of, I don't know if you do on your websites, we get a lot of um, bots uh, trawling websites and sending us, completing our forms, which are sometimes quite amusing. Um, I could have quite a few whys by now, but um, thankfully I've not clicked on the links. But, um, you know, there, there is, a, there is a, a point here which we need to improve the validation. So how do we stop those bots getting there? So you want to reduce um, false data by about 10% per quarter, because if, let's say, as the company grows, we get more and more people filling in these forms. I don't want, um, you know, our sort of business support function having to trawl through tons of tons of nonsense and stuff that's actually inappropriate and a bit rude and a bit naughty. So if we can get rid of that by 10% each quarter. So it'll be a cumulative 40%, it won't be 40%, it's going to be 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% um, by May 2024. Hopefully we'll have eradicated sort of 90 of as well, hopefully 90 of percent of all of the nonsense that comes through. So you're starting to get really specific in that. And now I can then say to, to, to Luca, I really want you to focus on sorting out this issue around um, false data. Can you have a chat with some um, website people and chat with some specialists in this space? And can you find a way of, of getting rid of this, you know, maybe locking things down differently or, or having a diversion or some sort of tool that, that knocks them out or sticks them somewhere else? And then I can then have a chat with Pamela, who's responsible for marketing, to say, now, how are you going to increase you know, the number of traffic and form completions by 5%? And then in terms of my one of my goals, which is around improved uh, user experience on our learner platform, um, you know, we want users to get a high, um, you know, we want people to access our content within three clicks or less. So get on our learner platform, get to the thing that they need. If they're doing a, a level five in leadership and management and they're on module two, Within three clicks, they can access all of the content for module two, all of the assignment information, all of the guidance in three clicks or less. At the moment, a lot of it is held on our SharePoint site. It's a fantastic SharePoint site. But actually, you know, if we start to look at that automation and, and some more specific platforms, maybe we can increase that um, learner experience. And more importantly, and this is the crucial thing, um, there are a whole load of legal things and accessibility things where we are a disability confident employer. So one of the things that we um, we have done and do is we employ people who do have um, additional needs. And so we need to make sure and it's kind of a legal requirement for everyone to do it. But the, the standards are quite high is that we meet certain set of criteria for accessibility so that screen readers and uh, all those different bits of technology um, allow uh, can work with all of our infrastructure, be it emails, uh, web websites, um, learning platforms. So it gives you an idea because, you know, it's easy to kind of set these broad goals on the left hand side. Yeah, improve sales. But how? Um, let's set some objectives, you know, so it kind of gives you a real sense of how we're going to get there. Well, probably a bit more what, but it starts to make us think about, you know, specific tasks that each person in the business is going to have to do. And then, you know, when we sit down as a team, I'd probably hand out maybe was rewriting some of these, but each of us would sit down and say, how are we going to contribute to, to this, these goals? How are we going to contribute to all of these objectives? And then once you've got all that stuff set up, so we've all got wonderful bits of paper that say we've got a big bit of paper that said the company's going to do all this stuff. Um, I've got my plan. Pamela's got her plan. Luca's got his plan. Um, and how then are we going to track performance? You know, we've got these really clear goals. We've got performance metrics. We know how we're going to measure it. And here is just a simple framework um, for you to have a to have for you to have a think about. So, for instance, uh, we've got, you know, maybe if you have real time data, so we've got obviously real time data on our website, you know, Google Analytics tells us a lot. Uh, 
we've also got Office 365, so we can draw down data about how people are interacting with some of our um, SharePoint sites and things like that. So we can collect information on an hourly basis, depending on what you're doing, that may or may not be relevant, okay? But knowing what you can collect in real time is quite interesting. So I'd say spend some time looking at that. If you run some sort of shift process that so we've worked with print companies and they have shifts, so there might be a bit of, um, you know, performance management between shifts, so a bit of a conversation between staff, you know, a simple conversation is just as important as some sort of hard data. So you might want to manage performance between shifts, so there might be a 50 minute handover between one shift and the next shift, or you might be collecting data from people who've just completed a shift, especially if you're running a new type of production. Every day, you probably want, if you've got some sort of line management or frontline management or supervision that's happening on the shop floor, if you are producing something, or if you like us, you know, our daily check-in will be talking about, you know, how are we progressing with the number of hits from the last day? You know, what things are we going to try and do today? What stuff is going to be going out today? So, you know, a daily, a daily check-in, um, you know, and if you are managing people, a daily check-in with that um, employee is really important. Weekly, you might want to do a bit of root cause analysis or just some analysis. What, what, what was really good? So what happened? How can we do more of that? What went really badly? How do we do less of that? Or how do we learn from, from that error? And then how do we then cascade that across all of the people in our business? And as you grow and as we grow, you're going to have to get really good at this because, uh, you know, certainly when you get to sort of really big companies, it's really hard to get that. Keep this keep this process going. It requires real discipline. On a monthly basis, you know, we, Pamela will get, have my, I'll have a chat with Pamela about my progress. I'll have a chat with her and then we'll meet with um, Luca at the moment. And then as we get more staff, we'll, we'll have monthly catch ups with each of our um, employees. But we'll continue to hold each other to our account as well. And then um, each quarter, I have to say, this is the bit that we are not very good at and we, we really need to work on this, is start to tr trace quarterly performance. So when you're a service company like us, you know, things to measure can be a bit tricky. But certainly when we have a contract to do some work, um, you know, the quicker we can deliver that and achieve high quality results, the more less time, you know, the more time we have available to get more work in. So actually, you know, keeping our sort of billable hours down is, um, you know, is is quite important. So you know, we're going to start getting a little bit more scientific about what we track and then start to track that on a quarterly basis. But again, it requires discipline and time. Um, you know, something Pam and I really have to fight against because we we are really good at getting stuff done. We're less good at kind of going back and just checking things over. So, you know, we're, we're good at advising companies. Sometimes it's really difficult to do it yourself because you're trying to win more work. You're trying to manage relationships. You're trying to make sure that the next few years is going to be all right. Um, and therefore, some of this stuff can be a bit difficult to manage. I'm just being honest. So um, we're sort of coming to the end now. I hope you found that interesting. Um, if not, I also find that interesting because um, it's always good to know, you know, what people would want to know or if you've got a different view on this stuff. I, I'm always open to ideas. Um, but we thought we would ask you a couple more questions um, just to sort of close off today's session. Then we can have a bit of q and I've been trying to answer them as I've been going along. But the first question is, will you review your business plan um, in the next three months? Yes, no, don't know. Um, and how likely are you to review um, how you manage the performance of your business in the next three months? So we've got very, slightly, maybe, and not at all. So from my point of view, um, yeah, well, you know I am, because I've been talking about that. We are looking at it. Uh, and as I said, it's not about the process. It's more about the conversation that's important. And in terms of how we manage performance, it's something that I think we're not going to just be talking for the next three months. I think it's going to be the 12 months topic for us. But I'm not trying to influence your views. I'm just sort of trying to share how we're, we're thinking about it. So it's not straight cut at all. Um, so we'll just wait for the results to come through and then I'll talk through the results for those of you who are watching this on a repeat. And this is where we'd hope that Phil can start singing um, to provide a little bit of a musical interlude, but he's not up for it today, clearly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we should be nearly there. Oh, here we go. And here we go. OK, will you, you review your business plan next three months? Yeah, 87. That's really good. That is really, I really, that's really good to hear. Uh, no, well, fair, fair dues. I, you know, it's one of those things. Ask me the right time, right time for you. Uh, and I'm sure you've got your different way of doing it. I think that's absolutely fine. And don't know. Yeah, have, have a think about it and, and figure out what's best for you. It might not be the plan you want to review. It might be the um, objectives um, or aspects of it. So how likely are you to review them? Uh, 
manage the performance of your business in the next three months. So 74% of you said you're very likely, 13% uh, said you were slightly and 13% maybe. So that's really good. And I hope some of today has been useful. Um, no doubt you'll have, you know, you've got Google, you know, you don't need me talking to you. If you're not sure, there's tons of stuff on YouTube. If you like stuff, visual and audio, there's stuff that people have written, um, you know, it's everywhere. The FSB has got a load of resources, actually, I've got to say, if you go in, if you if you are a member, you can go in and they've got a ton of resources on all of these different topics. Um, but thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, that that is um, that is it. And um, I'll just got one last quote, uh, which is no matter how good the team or how efficient the methodology, if we're not solving the right problems, the project fails. So I'd say if you're not all working together in your business, trying to solve the same problems together, then there is a risk that things won't go right. So I'd say spend the time really making sure you're all working together on things. Um, and then through those conversations, through the planning, you, you'll, you'll do absolutely brilliantly. Um, but thank you for listening. Hopefully our story has been a little bit useful, um, but I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Mark. Very useful. Um, if uh, Mark has been answering questions throughout, but if you do have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and we'll cover them off before the end. Just many, many thanks, Mark. I thought um, uh, fascinating and insightful. Um, you know, following on perfectly from the last session and teeing goes up perfectly for, for the next one. Uh, so, so thank you so much. Um, just, I should have said this at the outset, um, today's session was recorded, will be available on our on-demand page on the FSB's website in case you want to watch it again. Um, if you aren't yet an FSB member, we'd love to have the opportunity to speak to you further about the benefits of membership. So please do visit our website, which is www.fsb.org.uk uh, to book a meeting with a membership advisor. If you enjoyed today, uh, please also do leave us a Trustpilot review. We would really appreciate it if you uh, could do that. Um, now, just quickly check if there have been any additional questions. Uh, that is it, I think. No, no additional questions. I think Mark's been great at answering them throughout. Um, lovely. M remains to be said. Thank you so much to Mark. Thank you so much to everyone who's attended today. Please do join us next month for the third and final of these sessions. Excellent. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.